the Great War through a London child's eye. August 15th, 1918. Sid's mother has been unwell. Luckily, it wasn't the Spanish flu, a horrid illness that causes folk to die in a matter of days. They say it's spreading to every corner of the globe because this war has troops moving all over the world. It's strange how every day men are being killed in battle and back here in Blighty not a day passes without another funeral. We're used to hearing about death on the front, but seeing it here amongst normal folk is awful. I'm so tired of feeling awful. Mother said the flu was something called a pandemic. That's a really terrible illness which kills tens of thousands. And it seems determined to claim as many lives as it can. Here, Edward, look sharp. It's the funeral cortege from Mabel. Get your hat off, you buck. Oh no, poor Mabel Matthews. She was at your school, wasn't she, Sydney? Yeah, a great girl. Tremendously kind, you know. If her dad ever makes it back from the war, he'll be coming to an empty house because her mother and sisters all copped it too, didn't they? That's so desperately sad. Poor Mabel. The worst of it was no one has a clue how to cure Spanish flu or even treat it. Mother's lost several of her friends at the census office. She thinks it's because they sit so close around tables. I'm worried for her. My school hasn't been affected so badly. They say children and old folks seem to be more able to fight it off. Well, sometimes. Aggie tells me that Oxo is the thing to cure the flu. You know, gravy. Gravy? Yes, I'm not sure I am convinced, but every day one of the girls seems to have a new tonic. Iodine, whiskey, camphor. If you ask me, the best you can do is stay away from those poor souls who are afflicted and wash your hands frequently. Cleanliness is next to godliness after all, and we need God's help more than ever. Sid and I followed the cortege to St Gregory's, but we didn't go inside. It's hard to admit, but we didn't want to risk catching anything. After all, it seemed to spread like wildfire. We sat on the wall and listened to the hymns, though, and remembered Mabel for a while. Hey, what's that on the bench? You mean who? Isn't that old Davy, the gravedigger? Oh, heck, he's not dead, is he? No, just sleeping. He must be so tired. Look how many graves there are. He may run out of space. Mother says they have to put more than one body in the grave in some places because there's no room left for new. Not sure I'd like to share. Not sure I'd like a dose of the flu. And I had a little bow. His name was Enzo. I opened the window and it's... That's the new rhyme the kids are singing. Hey, have you heard how they die? It's gruesome, I'll tell you. You go blue and then you become afflicted with delirium. They say you don't even recognise your family. And then within days, bam. You're off to meet your maker. All right, I get the idea. Father wrote to me about one of his men, got hit by shrapnel, so came back to London on the ambulance trains, all tucked up in the Marsden, probably thinking he was the luckiest Tommy in the world to be out of the firing line. But some of his fellow soldiers came back infected with the flu and suddenly the whole ward was wiped out. Nurses too. Ah, oh, poor man. That's no way to go. Father seemed furious about it. He's, well... I think he finds it hard to write cheerful things lately. Doesn't seem to matter where you are in the world right now. There just ain't any cheerful things to go around. It's true. I can't feel hopeful about anything. Things just get worse and harder and then harder still. I try to stay steady for Mother, but I must admit, dear diary, sometimes I wonder if this is what life will be like forever. Great War through a London child's eye. Supported by the National Lottery through the Heritage Lottery Fund. Read Edward's diary at funkidslive.com slash greatwar.